Have you ever heard the absolute insane claim that the 10mm is basically a 41 Magnum or even a 44 Magnum? I don't believe this at all, and I don't even think the 10mm will beat out either of these short barrel revolvers with a much longer barrel. But I brought four targets to find out, and here's the first scenario. Let's just say you're out in the woods when out of nowhere a wild hog starts charging at you. You see him out of the corner of your eye, but the problem is you're in a thick forest of five and a half inch diameter pine trees. You take the shot, but oh no, it's centered on one of the pine trees. Would any of these do the trick? Trick. Only one way to find out. Nice. Two good shots, and I believe I heard them hit the steel, but let's check. Oh my gosh. Those opened up. I should have told you that I'm using XTPs instead of the regular FMJs, but uh, anyway, here are the markings. Really didn't do much of anything. Onto the 41 Magnum, though. I absolutely love that 41 Magnum revolver, but anyway, there are two shots. I mean, a little closer than I would have liked. First one was spot on, though, but anyway, let's check out the back. And they opened up just like the 10 millimeter. What happened to the steel? Barely touched the steel at all. I mean, it didn't even knock the paint off, really. Huh. 44, anyone? Actually, hold on a second. I think these are some of our bullets. Or pieces of them anyway. This one is actually a pretty sizable piece. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's that 41 Magnum. Wow, that barely deformed at all. Or, I mean, it deformed, but you know, you would think it smashed the steel a little harder. Oh man, and then there's our other one down here too. Two for two. At least they're pretty consistent. Let me tell you, I think I need a red dot on every one of my handguns because they just make it so much easier. Or you could learn how to shoot. <laughs> hey now, I 100% forgot where the hold was on this revolver. So uh, the first shot hit here, I believe, and then the second one hit down here, but then the third one was pretty solid. So uh, see if that messed with the 10 millimeter too much. No, I mean, it looks like a different wound channel. My gosh, these barely touched the paint either. What is going on? Man, there is like no dent at all. I guess I might have to examine that a little bit further to see which one was the actual winner later because we're moving on to the next test oh man i think that's the 44 magnum or well one of the 44 magnum bullets but uh, ooh, actually just the jacket of the bullet <laughs> and i don't think i'm really finding that lead anywhere but uh still pretty cold nonetheless you know what i think i just found it this appears to be the 44 magnum uh, the lead that was inside the 44 magnum projectile pretty darn cold but as you could see definitely not uh, obviously xtps are not a bonded bullet bad news because of you i don't even have six inches to work with anymore well six inches of sand that is it, you know it's just getting too boring so i decided to spice things up a bit and switch it to a splatter test what is a splatter test you may ask well actually Actually, I'm gonna need this piece of steel back, so if you wouldn't mind coming down for a second. Each cartridge will have a gallon of water, and whichever cartridge can dump the most kinetic energy into this gallon, i.e. the splatter part, it will be the winner of this test. And it will be backed up by a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, just in case there are any discrepancies. On to the 10. That was substantially better than I thought it would be. I mean, my camera is almost four yards away from that target over there, and it is wet, like freaking soaked. Anyway, let's check out the damage here and see. Oh, ho, ho. straight through the three quarter inch piece of plywood. I mean, I, I don't think it would do anything to steel, so I won't switch it over, but that jug is shredded for, especially for a handgun. Oh, T Terry, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I forgot to tell you that you're gonna be in the splash zone. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. 41 Magnum. <laughs> Good shot placement, but I really couldn't tell. I mean, I can't really stare at it, so we'll have to look at the slow-mo and see if it did as much or more than the 10 millimeter. See where I... Oh, yeah. Centered right on the money. Kind of sounds like I'm peeing or something. <laughs> anyway, the three-quarter inch piece of plywood straight through, I believe it is the top one. Or wait, no. No, the bottom one is where it went through, and it went straight through. I don't know if I need to change out this uh, piece of plywood or not. <laughs> Maybe I'll get lucky and get all three on there. Man, it split that bottle up. That is a nice looking hole right in the center of the bottle. It 
appears to be anyway. Let's check out the three quarter inch piece. Oh, I got lucky. I got extremely lucky that it did not stack on the other ones. A little bit lower than the other ones, but right on the money. We got to give that one to the 44. Actually, I'm not so sure about that. Looking over the slow-mo, the 10 millimeter was probably at least as good, if not slightly better than the 44 Magnum. I mean, I don't know that for sure, but one thing I do know for sure is that I love big handguns. The problem is I don't get to use them as often as I'd like because they're an absolute nightmare to carry. That is at least until I found this video's sponsor, Arrowhead Tactical, because what I bet you didn't see is that I'm carrying a full-size Glock 20 right now, and not the short frame either. And what else I bet you didn't notice is that I'm carrying a Ruger LCP Max in this pocket, just in case I need some backup, and I'm also carrying a Glock 42 in this pocket, just in case my backup needs some backup. And guys, I don't know what kind of magic they're doing, because not only are these some of the most comfortable shorts I've ever worn, but they also allow me to carry super big handguns effectively, which cannot be said about most of the other clothing I have. So if you're a fan of carrying big handguns, you know, just like I'm doing right here, and you like wearing joggers and sweatpants, check out my link in the description to Arrowhead Tactical. Bad news again, the thick queen ant is back, which means your ant problem is back. As we all know, the only way to get rid of your ant problem is to get rid of the thick queen ant. Problem is, she's hiding behind a 1.57 inch thick concrete paver, and you only have access to these three setups. Could you get the job done? Only one way to find out. <laughs> There is no way I'm getting that one back together. Eventful for sure, but that does not mean you got the thick queen ant. Let's check it out and see. Ooh, that thick queen ant is still kicking. There's barely any spalling uh, or pieces of concrete that came off and hit her. You got an ant problem. almost forgot to say guys, on these last couple there have been some pretty substantial pieces that came back and uh, hit the shield right here, so don't try this at home. Eventful, just like last time, but as we saw last time, that does not mean you got the evil thick, uh, thick evil ant queen, so anyway, oh yeah, oh yeah, maybe a little bit more concrete spalling, but not a whole lot. Looks like your ant problem is here to stay, that is unless the 44 Magnum does the job. And let's see if it does. Oh my gosh, I think I just found one of the bullets i'm not sure I, probably from the 41 magnum it feels pretty heavy but as you could see it took the shape of that concrete pretty darn well that's a pretty cool looking bullet <laughs> A little piece of concrete, I guess, was hauling ass to get to me after that shot. I mean, went straight through the shield. It was it was a little, though. Surprisingly, not as eventful as I thought it would be. Most of the pieces ended up over here, and they're actually larger than the other cartridges. But does that mean we got the thick evil queen? Let's check it out and see absolutely nothing. Guys, your end problem is here to stay. Unless you get a bigger handgun, or... Maybe a different bullet? Are you a fan of penetration? Do you like seeing how deep things can go? Well, have I got a test for you. Ballistic gel. And I don't mean you, Terry, but uh, we should be able to see all of that and more. Hopefully. How about some velocities on those XTPs, though? <laughs> Wait, but the box said, hold on a second. Out of a 10 inch, who's packing a 10 inch? I mean, four inches is much more common for average men like me. Anyway. There's the shot. Let's pull out the good old pinky and, s oh yes, that is a nice big hole. And as you could see, that fragmented in six different directions, just like the uh, XTP bullet design. And it did massive damage. Let's check that wound channel out though and see massive damage up front. And it opened up right away. Check that out. Let's see where the bullet ended up. Probably about the 13 and a half inch mark. Let me grab my tape measure real quick. Apparently I don't add enough length to things because that came in right at about the 14 inch mark. I mean, maybe not quite the 14 inch mark, but pretty freaking close. See, the problem is I think this is where the 10 millimeter is really gonna suffer, but uh, let's jump to the 41 Magnum.
there's that shot. Let's dive right in. Oh, maybe not quite as good as a 10 millimeter, but still pretty decent. Let's check out the wound channel though. Opens up right away, but definitely not quite as devastating as a 10 millimeter. I mean, I guess a lot of that has to do with the low velocity. Harry's actually a pretty decent wound channel the whole way through. Hey, I guess that's the bullet in there. Man, if I had to guess, I would say that's about 23 inches. Let me grab my tape measure. Like I said, I undervalue lengths and uh, there it is, right at about the 24 inch mark. <laughs> pretty freaking impressive penetration, but it doesn't look like it exposed expanded a whole lot. I mean, a decent amount. There are some fragments in the wound channel, but you know, just not as much as a 10 millimeter, obviously. There it is. And the big boys up last. And I gotta take a quick second to thank Midway USA for all the support, guys. They have been the longest supporters of the channel, and I really appreciate their continued support, even with all the craziness going on. But uh, anyway, if you like what I do here, I really think you'll like Midway USA. And another big thanks to Timmy for supplying this alpha trigger, guys. It is a game changer for this G40. Go ahead and disregard that first shot. There's nothing to see there. But anyway, the second shot. Now that, if I could get it. Oh, that is what I'm talking about. Basically the same hole as a 10 millimeter though. And as you could see, the bullet fragmented just like the 10 millimeter, all six different pedals. And let's check out that wound channel. Very similar to the 10 millimeter and it carries it quite a bit further. Actually carries it further than the 41 Magnum. Man, and that bullet mushroomed out perfectly. Let me grab my tape measure real quick. After I straighten up this block, I'm just glad it didn't fall off this time. Oh, I forgot to give my guess. I'm gonna say 26 inches. Let's see. Oh my gosh, guys. I am right on the money. I'm just kidding. I already saw it. Well, the 44 took that one too. Let's do some more examining on the other rounds though. We'll just call round one a draw, and although the 10 millimeter did a lot better than I thought it would, I don't think it's comparable to a 44. D d well, my uncle loads a plus P plus plus 10 millimeter that'll smoke either of these. That's great, but my viewers don't know your uncle. Anyway, you might have a case with the 41 Magnum, at least if somebody's not packing a 10 inch barrel. And remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas. Because what I bet you didn't notice is that I'm carrying a full-size Glock 